Convene this March 30th, 2023 Town Council FY 2024 budget work session. We'll start with the Citizens Forum. Is there anybody here that would like to speak? Come on up. <coughs> Let the record show that there is no one here from the public to speak. And we'll move into discussion starting with the debt schedule. And we got a lot of stuff in front of us here. The things that are hole punched are meant to be put in the binder, right? I mean, there. Yeah. So y'all can keep all your extras if you ever want to look back at your notes. And last week we went over the debt schedule and the fund balance. We didn't finish the agenda, so we used the same one. Um, I know Chip wanted to talk first about the bond payments again, and then we can go into health insurance. Sure. And as I as I emailed council. Uh, sort of teeing this up, we had discussed last week um, a prepayment or early payment of a couple of bonds. I think there was, I just kind of wanted to talk this out a little more fully after we all had a chance to sit back and kind of think about it. The I'll let you talk about your plan, and then Council Member Beecham had, he was the one who recommended we move up that payment and just sort of have a... Just so you know, I um, I did some number crunching and so I kind of it looks like this yeah got some red on it yeah just to kind of give you an idea of how each one affects earning or interest the, the idea uh, the concept was since we had such a great amount of interest coming in was kind of harvest that off uh, I won't, won't say monthly calculate monthly but on a, a quarterly to six year uh, six month basis and then use that to attack the debt without impacting the, the fund's balance itself, balance itself. If we were to take off the immediate uh, payment, we would, we would still be harvesting a great deal of interest or bringing in a great deal of interest, but we would be to the negative about 73,000 if we just did this as, as I had laid it out. Karen went and dug a little deeper after we talked about this we will save 21,000 on the ARRA bond. Again, the ARRA bond, the interest isn't what's getting us. It's, its fee is $5,700 a year. It's, it, it's an excruciatingly high fee. The 2012 bond, we would save uh, 149 for a combined amount of 171 over the life. If we pay off the funds balance lump sum, the total saved is 201193 which is was higher than 171 until you take off that $73,000 in interest that we would have earned had we just kept the, the the top up there and just been skimming that interest off the top to pay at the debt and that's why I, I'm asking council to look back and and go with the original plan we make a payment in May as planned because that's when the 23 budget payment was due or will be due and then we pay again in November as planned to pay it off. And then the ARR bond is paid on its due date next February. We're paying on the dates because if you pay off the date, you have extra fees incurred. Why would we not be saving the 73000 wherever the money came from? The dollars in our various cash accounts, each of those dollars don't know that they're fund balance or operating account. It's the same dollar. Yes. So if we pay off the loans, we're going to, we will have the same interest loss no matter where, what dollars we use it from, whether it's our fund balance account or the operating account. We're Just, still going to lose the interest. Well, it will reduce what we have in the bank. So we'll. Either way. Yeah. But it will be earning. We won't earn that 71, 73,000. But we won't earn it either way. If the money's still in the bank, we will. If How's we it going to stay in the bank? Because we're going to phase it in and pay based off interest earned over a period of time instead of right away. We'll phase it out out of fund balance then instead of phasing it out out of the operations account. I mean, and I guess that would be the same thing. Essentially, we're just not going to hit it right away in May. We'll phase it out. It'll still be essentially the same money. Yes. But we'll still keep the interest because the fund balance stays the same now. 
How does it right. say the same over time? Not over time, but over time we're earning that interest. So essentially, we're not earning what we're earning seventy three thousand dollars less interest over time. She's saying don't take yeah. it out on May first. Take it out of the fund balance at the phase schedule. Okay. You know, whatever schedule yeah. you want, just pay it off the fund balance instead of out of the operating statement. But well, still phase it. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. That's just, well. That's the same money is what you're saying. Is what you're saying is because that interest is in the fund's balance. And, it, and that, that's going in there. We're actually, well, we were pulling it out of there, but I'm trying to identify that is we're not trying to touch that core, the core balance of the funds balance. Uh, it's the interest that's accumulating and that we're stripping off. I am supportive and prepared to move forward with the phase payments harvested from the interest from. I think that way balance. that will allow us also to just keep an eye on the interest rate. If anything's going to change, we can revisit. Um, as opposed to pay it all now and then the interest rate drops. Not that I expect it to, but over a year and a half, you know, not sure where we would be at with the interest. So that would help. Sure. Okay, so this is different than either one of these proposals. It's no, kind of no, we're, 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 we're well, we're, no, because the payment. Where's the payment coming from? It's not coming from the funds balance, right? I mean, it's coming out of the <laughs> operating if, budget. If we're going to pay it off, right. whatever schedule we're going to pay it off, pay it out of fund balance instead of off of the operating right. income. Right, and the PUT funds, that's not really, that's that would normally be operating, right? Yeah, the, I mean, the cash, it's the same dollars. Yeah. It's just a matter of whether it's the balance sheet or the P&L. Right. What is your recommendation? I like the phased approach just because I want to keep an eye on the interest to ensure that we're continuing to earn what we, you know, instead of paying it off now and then if the interest rate drops, I don't want to. Okay. Is there a consensus for a phased approach at least? Yes. 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 Does it matter to you what, where it comes from on the balance sheet? No. Okay. And I think Essentially, we if we phase it, we're still earning interest on a lot of that money. Yes. So a phased approach seems fine. The phased approach is, is what I think is the optimal approach. We have a couple things coming, and, and I don't want to harp on the plant. That, that's a different issue. But we've also got a request in for significant funds, federal funds for roads. Um, I got an, I got a thing back from Senator Van Hollen's office, who we worked very well with last year, asking some more questions already provided. The if they come back to us with anything close to what we need, that funds balance is there to kind of whittle down or, or complement and stretch our dollars farther to get that neighborhood done. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye not on the immediate balance, but on the future balance and how we implement uh, corrective actions or maintenance over time. Steve, you've been talking about how ridiculously high our fund balance is. So the thought of paying this off with fund balance dollars addresses your concern. The fact that our operating statements come in in negative position, we're drawn from fund balance just to get a balanced operating statement here. Mm -hmm. So why, why I, I, draw this yeah. even more? Sure. I mean, we solve two problems here if you're going to pay it off out of fund balance. You're here. It's a general job with your thinking? The cash assigned to the operating fund still continues to earn all of its sure. interest. It does, The yes. fund balance yeah. does not continue to earn as much interest because we've used those dollars to pay off the debt. And if we're still phasing it, so essentially it's not all the money coming out of here. Yeah. a little bit here, yeah. I feel like. I think, we're, all, I think we're in violent agreement. <laughs> the, the phased approach is just allows us to keep accumulating the interest, but it's all going to come out of the same bank accounts is what you're saying, if I'm correct. Yes, and from an yeah. accounting perspective, I'd rather see it come out of fund balance than off the operating statement because that'll help I with agree. this negative that we got here. It's frustrating enough that the budget comes to us with a negative, you know, out of balance, but um, it will impact that less and will address your too large of a fund balance issue. Yeah. And, and, and as a reminder, with paying off the funds balance, that negative goes away because we, we put back the payments that we would have used for the 2012 and the ARRA to the tune of three. Yeah, 300 and. Close to 400K. Yeah. yeah. Well, the negative just goes away by the interest amount, mm -hmm. not yeah. by yeah. the principal. So whatever interest was going to be paid, what are, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. We've got a good decision, I think, here. You're in a good place. I'm, I'm happy with it. You yes. are in a good place. You're in a good place. and. Awesome. 
We are cranking forward. Thank you for obliging me with revisiting that decision. And we are health insurance. Yes. Probably, yeah, you're being recorded. Anything you may say. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the Miranda chief. <laughs> <laughs> Raise my right hand. <laughs> St. Michael's makes you do that. Um, so before I begin, I wanted to at least uh, let you know that I did give you some updated sheets for A92 department and B10 uh, for um, active and proposed uh, health insurance and HRA cost estimate totals um, as they um, needed to be. It looks like this. Uh, so the B10 is the green. Okay. The, the second page. Yes. Uh, no, oh, I'm sorry. It's yeah. a two-page handout that replaces some of the pages in the multi-page handout. Correct. So there's two-page handout that doesn't have pages on it, but they're going to replace page one and page two of the stapled Got it. health insurance packet. Okay, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> And that's going to um, correct the health insurance budget line totals for A92 and B10, um, which Karen has updated in the current budget spreadsheet. So the numbers will match. Um, as you can see in A92, from the last time we were looking at the budget, for health insurance and HRA, so that there was like a $30 decrease in the health insurance and a $1,300 increase in the HRA with a total net difference of $1,270 um, for A92. There's a little bit more of a significant change in the B10. It actually, um, the health insurance decreases by 30 grand. Uh, and that is because one of our, uh, one of the employees um, is in had a different has a different enrollment than what was in there and just so you know that these are manual entries um, because I don't have a database <laughs> that can actually just pull the report so these are all manually tracked and maintained so I apologize for that oversight but it has been corrected and um, so hopefully the spreadsheets that I have in front of you will provide some insight um, if we're looking at the A92, page one, um, you can see the first half of the chart shows your active uh, budgeted positions um, with the um, health insurance total line of the uh, 184833. Um, so when you're looking at the budget line and you're seeing it 248945, you're seeing that that's the proposed and the active. So I separated that out in the chart so you can see the uh, cost difference. Um, and that's with all of the departments. On page four, I know. Um, what is the WC rate? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, workers' comp. Ah. Yep. So that is uh, it's my best effort in trying to keep track of all of the insurances cost. Um, so that is your workers comp rate for FY24 for this class um, position. Uh, there's different rates for different classifications based on the NCCI rating. And just remind me, so health insurance for A92 is 184,833 starting fiscal year 24 or this year? Uh, fiscal year 24. That's my estimate for FY24. Um, what is, just remind me what that, what it was this year? So for FY23, that is in the FY23 budget of 173.764. We'll call a 10K difference estimated. Correct. However, uh, let me correct that. So it's actually 158164 for health insurance, 15,600 for HRA for FY23. Because in FY24 it's split so that the 248945 is the health insurance total for active and proposed, the 22,100 is the HRA deductible. So 
I did split it in the department charts so you can see what the cost is. However, for budget purposes or for when invoices come in, they're all coded under the 7130 line. And typically, the health deductible line, um, I mean, I see that it has some balances in there. So um, I keep track of the difference. I mean, I, I keep track of each of the each of those lines. So we did in January or February, right? Didn't we do a COLA or did we defer that action? We did a, we did a COLA. COLA, yes. The sort of mid-year COLA. Mid-year, right. and that's, that's affected and in the salaries and, the, and other insurances, but not health insurance. So I guess we talked about wanting to kind of figure that out so we didn't have those mid-year salary adjustments just kind of make them part and parcel of the budget and so is that yes. is that's what is that what is reflected here in the proposed four year salary jumps Correct. For these? so in these yeah so i kind of give you more than just the health insurance but i wanted you to see the uh the split so i have the column that has the proposed annual salary that's inclusive of the step and the cola as it's shown on the merit scale so um so that way it lines up with the step and the grade so the step, I mean, I don't work in a industry where we have those types of increases. So just walk me through kind of, is that every year? Is it, how is that supposed to work? So that actually is, that's based on our personnel manual. It governs the merit system. So that's, that's what is the merit uh, part. So we are on a merit salary scale. When I worked for Prince George's County government, that's what we followed. So every classified position, and I know the federal government does it, where they fall on a grade scale. Um, and you'll start when you're hired at a certain step on that grade. So when your anniversary date comes around from your date of hire, you get your performance evaluation. Based on your performance evaluation, um, according to our current policy is that um, if it's satisfactory or better, then you are eligible for that merit increase so unless you're on probation right or correct so whatever, if you're probation you're getting... if you are not a non-merit employee so contractual um uh, temporary part-time okay. i mean you have to be the classified position and that's supposed to, i mean just sort of the way that works in an ideal world is you, employees are getting that step every year or, or as long as they're getting a satisfactory okay. performance evaluation. So it's not like you do a step and then you can wait three. You're not supposed to. We're not supposed to wait three years or four years. They're not designed to be that way. They're designed. Not designed. Okay. Um, okay. However, you know, it's always based on what's in the budget. Sure. Um, and that's something that I've tried to explain to a lot of our council years past because they would, you know, decide not to approve steps but improve uh, but approve colas, and regardless. Getting an increase is great, um, but that kind of defeats the merit system. Right. But we've done steps every year. I've been on a council, I think, pretty sure. Yes. Yeah, we did have it, uh, I think, what was a year or two ago that it was actually budgeted in those steps. Right, yeah, well, that's we right. We would just separate them out now yeah. as where we're trying to put them in the budget so you guys can see the right. whole picture and not have to readjust later. Sure. I didn't My understanding when I came on was that the steps were baked into the budget. It was the council's decision to bake them in. That's right. I Last think that's year, right. everybody got one in July. This year, the steps will hit on their anniversary date. We're moving towards that. There will be an evaluation. There will be an assessment. If you score where you need to score, the step is there. If you do not, and ideally, we don't get to the point where you're being told, no, you're not getting a step. You've been counseled well before then about performance. And that's, when, that's, what, that's why you'll see a, a differentiation in these because all the steps aren't hitting one July. I get you. And then so just one more. I'm sorry to bog this down. Oh, no, it's fine. Do you, um, when it comes to things like leave time, is that also on the, on the calendar or on the, I mean, is that also on the, when they commence their start date or is it on the calendar when they lose that time? Like when they hit their caps or what? Um, you know what I mean, so in our, in our, uh, software system, it, it does have programmed in a cap for end of year so that, um, if that's what you mean, or, so, or so if like, if, you I, first like if, if I can only carry over a thousand hours, right. And that's my limit. I'm, I don't know what the number, 
400 for four. annual leave. Yes. 400. So w- when is that? When am I losing that? Um, January 1 the, or? The last pay period of the calendar year. Do you think there's any, far be it from me to tell you anybody how to do their job, but do you think there's any merit to not having it work like that? So the steps, everything happens on the same. So you mean like, uh, so, oh, okay, so the annual leave if you, lose you hit your anniversary. your anniversary date and you've capped at yeah. five, 400, I, I mean, it, it would have to be, if or the, the system, all, all I can say is that if the system can't do it, we will have to do it manually. Or, or the steps and everybody loses their time J- June 30th and everybody gets the step July 1st. Like well, you- we used to, that's how it used to be, where everyone got their step increase July 1. However... Um, the decision for the step based on that performance evaluation, it does make sense mm-hmm. that that be the trigger yeah. point in time. And it staggers cost. Was there a problem with doing it that way? or? or um, it, well, it was because our, our old policy um, had all performance evaluations January of every year. Um, however, the the calculation part of it is what so certain departments have different probationary periods so if you you are you know all employees with the exception of police department have a six month probationary period so it's probationary period one year that's if they have their if they're maryland certified so it's um so when you have to figure out okay everyone has their evaluation in january um, let's say if somebody was hired in December, they're already getting a, ja- a January evaluation, or they're having to like wait the six months, get it, but then they get a step increase in July, like everybody else. I mean, it's pretty typical in private industry that everyone gets evaluated at the same time, and mm-hmm. that there are just trigger dates. So, like at my company, if you're hired after I think it's November first, we don't evaluate you and you're not eligible for merit until I mean they're waiting in that case we only do merit in March so which is the same as a step basically they're waiting a full year which is unfortunate but it seems to me like this all sort of taking place at once (laughs) jiving with the fiscal year would make a whole ton of a sense for us in terms of understanding like actually being able to budget it you would know well I do I I calculate based yeah and you know, then that's the thing He's doing is <laughs> when um, <laughs> when I worked for the county government, I mean, it, it was pretty typical in a government where your performance evaluation was based on your anniversary date. Um, yeah, this is the first the place <clears throat> I've ever worked where it wasn't based on my anniversary right. date. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, I guess the federal government the <laughs> evaluation period was at a fixed calendar time, but your step increase was based on an anniversary. So. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Yeah. Right. It's so, a lot I mean, to keep track of. I mean, it's a lot to keep track right. of. The, it is, and that's why we just had it as the anniversary date. You get evaluated. And, and the other thing, too, is that you're bogging down the department head or the supervisor every month in January when that's also tax season and everything else. So it's really gets hectic. But if you're spacing it out where they evaluate a, an employee maybe once a month, if that they can spend more time evaluating and sitting there having a conversation with the employee, more engagement versus like, you know. That's a whip. I yeah. Think sometimes it's, it's all done, yeah, no, so. I know by like my eighth person, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So <laughs> we really want to make it more of a, a, a more valuable occurrence, you know, for the performance of yeah, No, I definitely understand that. <laughs> and we have it in the system where you can put in there, when is their next review date? <laughs> so. Uh, so you said when you worked for Prince George's County, they got a step every year? If their performance evaluation was satisfactory or above. Now, they have, um, and it has been done, where if you have an unsatisfactory evaluation, you're sitting at that same step that you were at. Um, so, I, I can tell you that the state of Maryland does not work that way, and Anne Arundel County does not work that way. Federal Federal government... If you're in a grade, you're, they had uh, 10 steps. If you're a grade, doesn't matter the grade. If you're step one through four, it's every year. Step or, or grade uh, or step, step one through four is every year. Step five, six, and seven were every two years. And steps eight, nine, and 10 were every three years. So you could be in grade, you can be performing, but 
the longer you were in grade that you weren't getting promoted. You know, if you're, if you're a step nine, you've been in grade for a while, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it tells you something to, to kind of step I can up. tell you also that the way that the salary scale works is that the higher the step you are, the less of a percentage you sure. get. Sure. But I mean, go ahead. Sorry, Jim, for the state, in theory, it's supposed to work that way, but it's contingent on the butt. I mean, when I worked for the state, I was only a legislative non-merit employee, so it didn't apply to me, but it's supposed to be on a schedule and just the legislature does not often approve the steps in the budget, correct? Yeah, it seems to be an extraordinary event. For them to the happen. Governor proposes, as Governor Moore did last week, I think, proposed that all employees get a, a step. And that was an unusual thing. Right, but in, in supposed to happen, it just doesn't. I mean, the step in this, well. <laughs> I've been there two and a half years and haven't had a step increase yet, so. Sounds like Jim was going to work for the town. <laughs> Which I, I can honestly say it is contingent based on our budget. Yeah. Or Prince George's County. So, so, right. didn't do it either. so the, this is, I mean, this step and the COLA is costing the town $31,000. A $31,000 investment in our staff. Is that, would you, would you? Correct. I mean, as you look at a budget and you sort of think, you know, what are the sort of knobs you can you can turn to make this work for you, whether it's politically or ideologically? I mean, I'd rather have a step and a cola than a twenty thousand dollar training budget. That's just me. That's just my approach to things. But um, no, I, I mean, I appreciate this. I'm, I'm I was gonna say I'm only here to show you the data. So yep. <laughs> yeah. no, 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 whatever no. you decide is. I get it. <laughs> we all I think. <laughs> So, we appreciate it. So I, I, you know, and then, so that's your pages for each of the departments. And then there was the other one on page four that provided you with the premium rates. So I know Ashley had mentioned uh, during the last meeting that she would like to see what the FY23, FY24 difference was. Um, so these are the premium rates. This is equal for the employer cost share of 85 it's on page four. Oh, excuse me, page uh, one. Well, one of one, but technically one of one. Five, oh, I didn't know that it was page correct. I'm sorry. So it's this five. sheet here. One of one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first page five. <laughs> yeah. So she. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I got thrown off a little bit. They just all look so similar. It's well, I like colorful you know, <laughs> charts. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, this is uh, the premium rates. The first two rows, um, these are the total premium rates before the actuaries calculate the different tier levels. So what that means is when we get an invoice, you they have two tiers, a single or a family. Um, and this also you know, shows you the breakdown. So you can see that, and I've calculated this years ago to ensure that the actuarials are calculating it so that we're not getting screwed. <laughs> so I've, I've gone through it numerous times to make sure that it does balance out in the end. Um, so the first two rows are basically what the monthly and annual, annual premium rates are for a single or a family. Um, and that is, um, that is actually, oh, and I apologize. So that is actually for the gold plan um, before the breakdown. So as you can see, the, you know, where it says the 11% increase, um, or percentage increase, when it's broken down by the actuarials, and we have two different plans, the gold plan and the silver plan, you can see that there, the percentage increases equal for all of the different tier levels. So from FY23 to FY24, it's not like you know the employee has like a 15% increase versus an employee spouse with the rates. Um, and then in the, the right-hand column, where um, I also provided, an annual employer cost, and this is based on total employee en enrollment um, for both of the plans. So the, the estimates are based on census enrollment as of January of every year. 
Um, and this is when I have my mid review with Cigna, our, our carrier, as well as our broker. And they provide me all of the, the detail, all of the information um, based on everything up until December of the current fiscal year. So um, their census enrollment is based on you know, 16 individual or single uh, enrollees and then 13 for family. So you can see the FY23 cost versus the FY24 and what the difference is for that. Uh, and so I just broke it down to show the number uh, based on which plan uh, they were enrolled in, um, as well as the FY23 and FY24 cost. And um, so at the very bottom, it just shows the total uh, census enrollment at that time and what the total uh, department cost is for as of January 2023. So these numbers fluctuate. It's fluid because of any personnel changes, um, any qualifying events that can occur that can all of a sudden just change their premium rate. So I try to keep it as accurate as possible <laughs> for this month. <laughs> So, um, but again, this report is based on information as of January of 2023 for the FY24 um, and 23, yeah, FY24 enrollment. For the 10% increase, if it's in here, I'm missing it, but um, you might be able to give an estimate of how much of that was due to an increase in census and how much of that was a premium increase, or is that a per capita number there? So there was an 8% medical and uh, prescription trend. And that was actually based across the board of all the members of the health co-op with legit. So, um, yeah. So the, other than the 8%, the rest is due to a census change? Claims, claim fund, okay. um, typically, yeah. Was there a census change? Um, since FY23, yes. But like maybe two, three, yeah. I'm going to suggest something maybe somewhat revolutionary. I mean, if you look down the final column of FY20, this is back to page one. Oh. The, I'm sorry. Which? A92. 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 Sure. You've got, you know, and obviously this is fairly confidential stuff, right? We don't want to be talking about people's salaries in open Correct. public comment. But, but... It strikes me that there are some equity issues apparent here in the complete allocation package for people that have the same title, right? people that have the same jobs. And I just wonder, like, in, in my space, in the nonprofit space, you know, every employee at, at my nonprofit gets a letter at the beginning of the fiscal year that says, this is the entire compensation package, right, for, for your position here. And it's not just uh, because there can be a lot of griping. Oh, I only make 60 grand. Oh, well, you insure your, we insure your whole family, and you've been here long enough to get that benefit. So actually your compensation package is closer to $100,000. than. We've and, definitely, and I, in, yes. You know, I, don't, I don't know that there's a silver bullet solution to this problem tonight, but it just pops out to me that, like, you have people doing – the same job or at least with the same position title um, uh, are we talking because if we're looking at the position titles people on the same grade and step i don't well I'm no to, if they shouldn't be on the same step if they're making the, different amounts the, if they're not making different no, amounts the, the compensation is different because we're ensuring right. their family maybe right. versus right. not and here so yeah well okay go ahead so for me, and you know, maybe we can't reinvent the wheel today, but right. what strikes me as crazy is that employees are paying the same amount for insurance regardless of their salary. And so, you know, at my company, we're covered 100%, so it doesn't matter. Nobody's paying anything. But if you have a cost share in the private sector, typically you have it phased. So from my math, and I'm really bad at math, I've said that a million times, but employees pay anywhere from 126 to 400 a month. 
out of their paycheck to be insured by the town based on my math. Why should someone who makes whatever our lowest salary is, let's say, you know, in the streets department maybe, why should they pay the same for insurance as someone who pulls down a six figure salary from the town? Well, it, it, the health insurance is not based on salary. It's based on it could be. your enrollment. Our cost share could be. We could say we're going to pay 80% oh, okay. of employees over a certain salary and 85 of it. It just seems crazy to mm. me I see what you're that saying. an employee making a far lower salary pays the same for insurance as someone making 100 grand a year. Or there's, right. I mean, as someone with kids and a wife, mm -hmm. who, you know, uh, there's sort of, it's, I don't want to say, you know, they're not taking more take home pay for sure, but the overall package is much more generous if you insure your kids and your family, you know, with the town than if you don't. Right. And I think it's just a little bit of an equity issue for people that might not have kids. They, you know, don't have a family and, or, or maybe they're getting their coverage someplace else, right? But. Well, and it's definitely something to talk with our broker about, um, because I know that when we were first, when we first joined the health co-op, um, well, actually, even before then, we always had this tier breakdown. We, have, you know, the employee, employee, child, employee, spouse, and family. Um, so it's it's definitely something to look into and talk with them to say, is there a way the actuarials can break it down? See, the only, the only concern, I guess, is if somebody gets a promotion, let's say, and then all of a sudden they make more money, you know, do they go up into that tier? Because I've never been familiar That's with- part of the calculus for someone mm -hmm. if they take a position. I mean, all of this is part of everyone's individual calculus for if a job works for them. For me, it's, worries me what the council president brought up from both sides. One, an equity issue when you look at compensation across current employees, and two, a hiring equity issue. Are we less inclined to hire a 35-year-old woman who might need to insure her family than we are someone else? And maybe we're not consciously doing that. But I do worry from a, no, we, from a cost. You, I mean, you I, can't be in right. every hiring person in the town's head. I'm saying from a yeah. cost perspective, if, if we're just looking at, if we're, we treat them like widgets and not people, should the total budget for a position not not jive a little bit? I don't know. And like, do we insure everyone's spouses even if they can be offered insurance at their employer? We insure everyone. Okay. Yes, we insure everybody. At eighty five percent. Eighty five percent. I mean, that is sort. Of, and I we have a very more. we have a very good plan compared to all of the other municipalities and agencies. Now, I and oh, I mean, and I've and only I, worked I, in the government. I don't. I'm not as familiar with private sector and how their insurance structure works. I just know that even when I worked for a different government agency, we had the same type of tier, tier breakdown. It runs the gamut in the world. My right. last employer covered 50% of me and 0% of my family. I mean, that's about as bad as it can get. Yeah. My current employer, 100% of me, 70% of my family, I think. But they won't insure my husband if he can get his own insurance. So, I mean, there are... Oh, there's a variety. Oh, yeah, no. And what I meant to say is more of just the tier group versus, like, using the salary base. I've never... No, so the tier groups are that. typical. So, right. the, they'd be employee, employee, spouse, employee, child. My point is, let's say the premium is... the. The employee share would be different, so you're not changing anything. I about see what the you're saying. You're so the saying employers, employers making over eighty grand, mm -hmm. got it, are going to pay twenty percent, and employees making I see under are going to pay okay. fifteen. It's a I'm on board with you now. Okay. <laughs> well, and I, I, well, I'm going to say something that is just strictly anecdotal, but in my study of these sorts of things, the compensation package for government employees, whatever that means, right, mm -hmm. has always been heavy on the benefits because the government again, whatever that means, couldn't compete with private sector salaries. Strictly anecdotally, on the A92 page, I don't see that being the case. I don't think these salaries would be foreign to the private sector in this area, right? And so I don't know very many places that you can go. Certainly you can't come to a certain nonprofit in Easton and get 85% for the employee we cover 100% like like it sounds like Vice President Kaiser's employer and then you've got to be there for a while to get 50% coverage on your family and I just think but these salary levels are 
you know, right in line with what I'm paying as well. And so I'm just sort of, let's be mindful. I, I, I don't, and I don't know how we're, we have a lot of vacation time you can carry over. We got a lot of comp time folks can accrue. I mean, it's just the whole package seems really generous to me. And that's probably going to be unpopular in this room, but it just feels generous, really generous. No, I feel the same way. It's why I've been asking so many questions about the comp time. I, you know, we want it happy employees. This is certainly difficult to say in front of a whole bunch of town employees, but it does feel to me, especially when I look at salaries in particularly in A92, I agree. I mean, you can't go be an admin assistant anywhere around here privately. You want to go work at a law firm, you're not going to pull down that kind of cash or those kind of benefits. And so it's a challenge to me when we're constantly hearing, we need more COLA, we need steps, we need this, we need that. We have 12 paid holidays. We can roll over, I don't know, a month of leave. It feel, I, just, I don't know who our competitor is in the employment weeks. space. Uh, uh, well, for the most part, other government municipalities. Um, I understand what you're saying. My experience with the federal level was that the differences were because you had a variety of health care packages you could choose from and health care uh, or, or insurance uh, providers, Aetna, MDIPA, uh, Nationwide, you could pick. And so that was different. Here, we've got a single provider. And what I'm hearing from the council president and vice president is that the town pays right now 85 percent, regardless of your salary. We have a single provider. We tier that and say if you're making six figures and over, the town will pay 80%. If you're making, let's say 100 to 50, and I'm just putting numbers out here, the town will pay 85%. If you're making below that, the town will pay 87.5%. Just numbers, but I, I understand what you're saying. We can look at these numbers to graduate them to say, here's what part of the package will be. This has been a conversation among staff because mm -hmm. one of the things we're talking about on our new pay stubs is seeing the employer contribution. So when people say, well, I'm only making this, and it's like, well, by the way, $16,000 a year is coming to you to pay for your health insurance, mm -hmm. exactly. and, and, and you're paying this. So I went through this with the government. It was Contractors make a bazillion dollars, civilians get everything, military gets nothing, and then you tell the military folks, you get uniforms, you get a housing allowance, all your health care is 100%. When you come out, it's all going to come out of your paycheck, and contractors don't make the money you think they're making. So this is not unique to Centerville. But I understand what you're saying is that a graduated scale is part of your overall compensation package. And I think that is fair. One of the things we've also discussed is as we look at steps, there is a max. We're a small municipality. We just cannot go if somebody is working for us for 20 years and they end up, for the sake of discussion, their uh, admin assistant making $89,000 because they kept getting steps for 20 years. I think th that the salary is then way outpaced the, the skill set that we need for that particular position or the workload of that particular position. So there isn't, there isn't, there is a stop to all, all of this at some point in time that we're going to have to say, that's the salary, that's the max salary that position is going to pull down. Well, and I think, you know, we're not going to stop inflation in this room or with this budget, but I mean, the, the problem of pegging salaries to inflation over time is that inflation will eventually level out. You're not going to claw those salaries, salaries back. It, it, good point. Right, and I think salary inflation is can be a little sneaky, right? I mean, you, you get sort of, well, yeah, inflation's up 8%, so let's give an 8% COLA, which we've seen some in the nonprofit space uh, and probably pro private sector, I suspect. Um, and then next year, inflation, you know, is not, it cools down. Uh, and that's and typically why the COLAs are not a, every year, like a, a step increase you know would typically be if you're having it as part of a plan for this is how you yeah, get your sure. merit increase so, but it is based all on budget as well based on what you just said we don't have ranges for these positions where they stop i mean because yes they do they yeah they, they we, do I, what i'm have, saying is yeah so yeah. we have 20 currently so years ago um previous council um and i think it was based on just trying to develop a longevity plan we used to have only 20 steps 
previous council approved to add five additional steps, and that was four employees at the time that had been working for the town for 30 plus years. So let's say you hit year 25, you've You've, the, you've maxed out. Steps. You've, do we the, make a one-time payment to that person equivalent to the previous step? Only if only if the council approves a COLA increase that will they will get okay. an increase. Yeah, that once you max the steps. That's it. Gotcha. There, if, okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if my employer, and again, that's just because it's my experience. If you max your range, yeah. and you're eligible for that merit increase, you get it as a one-time lump sum. Yes. Gotcha. Because yeah, yeah, because what incentivizes you to do a good job? Correct. Yeah, well, exactly. And we've just never hit that point <laughs> for anyone who's actually made it to the twenty-five. Yeet. So we haven't had to. We did do have them hit one 20. time. So we had somebody live. We did have employees. We did have employees hit, hit twenty, top. and that's when the f uh, yeah. five additional steps were okay. were approved. Yes. And I don't think things like changing, you know, creating a tiered structure for. I mean, I know we're up against the clock on the health insurance, and that that was wonky to me last year. And so we start our budget process and we're sort of told figure out health insurance right now there isn't really time to make right. wholesale change to really, the program the way that things have been working though the last two years it hasn't been as hard the only issue is that if there's any plan changes then i have to work with the brokers to get the new plan documents uh, the new policies and everything um, provided and updated before open enrollment um, we typically I typically have to have open enrollment done within the first week of June and so that our carriers can prepare for the new health insurance effective July 1 so I you know I, I was looking at the 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 timeline to figure out okay when is the last point you know that we can we get the get numbers what ninth of March for the yeah. New, yeah. It, I've pushed it to be as early as possible. So actually, this year I was able to get the health insurance uh, rates in. Was it f February? Like January is when I had my mid review, and that's when they typically start getting the health insurance rates. However, that's just the medical insurance. Um, the vision insurance right now, the, the rates are locked in until June of 2026. So there's no rate change for vision. Um, the dental insurance, thankfully, I estimated a 5% increase because I didn't get the, the final number from our dental insurance company until last week. So uh, to me, this feels a little bit baked in, right? I mean, like, I, I just don't know how we can make huge Those changes, changes. <laughs> give no time for employee feedback or other feedback. Would it be possible? If I could interrupt, you could establish a plan and a stepped process to get there over a couple of years. The process you're talking about, about having the, the well, differential in the reimbursement rate or that's the, what I was the just copay saying. rate, you could start off with a one or 2% difference and then work your way up. Well, and just if we approved this as is this year, whatever we could work on a policy for next year without right. the numbers mm -hmm. absent the budget process we could right. in july say starting in fy25 this is going to be the policy and that would allow yes. plenty of notice i, I personally feel yeah. uncomfortable making any major changes to this today for a start two months from now we'd have we'd have to jam hard to get it done for, before we struck the budget but i see what you're i think the policy irrespective of the actual numbers can be formulated mm -hmm. and then we can plug in for the sake of discussion this year's numbers to say this is what it would look like and then once March comes along next year and we get our actual numbers we plug them in in the council by then the council has an idea of, of what is the a, a tiered uh, uh, compensation package would look like and, and where salary, that would like go ranges yeah yeah I just think where we do struggle to hire more, where we do have steep competition is in those lower wage positions. And, and so I, w I would like to see us, like the council president said, I don't, I don't think we're struggling to compete in some of these positions. And so the total package on the benefit side, if we're not gonna pay the salaries, maybe in my opinion, skew towards some of these more entry level positions. Right. The other part of that too, uh, 
Council Vice President, is the a maturity level of some of the, the lower. They don't think about, you know, if you're 22, you're still on your parents' insurance. It's not that big a deal. It's um, getting them to understand that th that's a significant. Well, I don't think once they're offered insurance by their own employer, they can stay on their parents' insurance. And so I, believe you're right. I also yeah. feel that we have a responsibility as an employer to provide, and I'm sure you do, but to provide some of that education about oh, yeah. the options as they exist. And also, I mean, for me, I work at a nonprofit because of public service loan forgiveness and almost no <laughs> other reason, right? And so like, you have to look at the total package of I, what's available. I you. do explain every year and I show them what the employer cost is, but I, I have, um, spoken with you know other colleagues and we're you know i'm going to try and change it up so it's almost on a p more personal level so that they themselves can see exactly what their compensation package is versus just seeing the chart of okay if this is if you're electing this you know enrollment this is how much the employer is covering um the what i've noticed is that regardless of what i educate any uh employees on several of them will think that it's an awesome thing until they see their paycheck. And then it doesn't matter, uh, you know, the, the, the benefit package, um, they still hone in on their net pay. And it, I, but I do still continuously try to educate them on, well, you're going to the doctor and you're not having any co-pays, uh, you know, you're going where does so. Where do those employees exist in the org chart? I'm sorry? Generally speaking, where do those employees exist in the org chart? In the org chart? Yeah. I, lower. lower. At the bottom. Uh, uh, absolutely. I think that's the point. But no, that's, what I'm yeah. saying, though, is that, you know, we are, and we all do try to educate them, and I do try to educate, especially with the benefits, trying to get sure. them to understand that yeah, as well. Sure. No, I'm sure you do. Well, we have, we have beat this to death. <laughs> <laughs> so what, anything else? Uh, no, I, I just wanted to you go over to that. And this, I, if right? you want to approve it tonight, that's fine. If not, you can do it next week as well. Um, <laughs> well, no yeah. reason to put it off. But I will certainly put a note to work on something for the FY25. The health insurance, not the health insurance. Not the cola and the just the health step. insurance. Right. So just the eighty-five fifteen share basically is what you're correct. Oh, if yeah. the percentage is going to remain the same, the eighty-five fifteen or so approving no change in the health insurance. Right. Plan. Correct. We're approving no change. I make I a motion to approve the health insurance as presented, if we work on a policy in the intervening year for next fiscal year. Second. Any discussion? Sounds good. Council person, so you want to we got roll call it. Council person Worth? Aye. Vice President Kaiser? Yes. 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 <clears throat> yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll certainly work on the FY25. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Watch you some time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll be in Texas working on spreadsheets. <laughs> Keeping in mind, we might not all be back here. <laughs> <laughs> Kick a lot of things to FY25. <laughs> <laughs> what else can we kick? <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you guys want to um, continue where we left off last week, we, um, the new packets I put today, if you want to start on page eight. This um, is with it, the binder clip? Yes. Can I ask a general question first? Mm -hmm. Doesn't us changing how we're dealing with the debt service change what we have available in the operating? No, because it's still based on fund balance interest. So it, the only thing it's going to change is the payments, <clears throat> whether they have to be made out of the, of the fiscal or operating. Because okay, I just thought whatever this we approved. This number down here will change. Whatever we approved last time that we undid tonight yeah. had added additional money into the operating. So is that gone now? This money. So like when you would have, I didn't take it out. So what was showing last week is the same as this week because the only change it would have made is like the PUT money would have went back in. And I, didn't, I didn't make any of those changes because Chip had wanted to revisit the issue. Okay, but right. But what the council wanted to see, that has changed back. Yes. Okay. Great. Yes. I would just appreciate generally that we see what we've asked to see. 
even if the town manager wants us to change it at the top of the meeting. All right, page eight in the packet um, would be administration budget. Um, you had <clears throat> requested a few changes um, looking at software, um, looking at safety and training. So we all met and um, we have reduced the um, safety education and training in half from 20 to 10. And we moved, um, reduced the software from 157 to 55, 661. Did we get a list of the software broken out? Yeah, on, it, what, it's on the last page, so it tells you last week it had a little bit more. This week you'll see it includes AccuFund Cloud, Munibilling, the HR system, and the intercom services. What, what, what are those things for? I'm not trying I mean, to be a jerk, but what, what I asked for was... We all we all did. The cost of the software. So not a list of software, but like munibilling and a dollar amount. Not for you Did guys to cut a bunch update, of the software off the list. Update that. And what it does. I don't see that. Yeah, list. I mean, I just feel like we're... <laughs> this budget process last year felt extremely secretive to me, quite frankly. And it and it feels that way again. That it, I don't know why we can't have like an... What, I feel increasingly uncomfortable approving the checks every week with no backup for those expenses and feel even more uncomfortable approving a budget without backup for the budget line request. Okay. We, we had a, a rather rough looking chart for the software that I thought, I thought was in the package. We'll fix this if we could um, delay this till next week, if that would make you more comfortable or get that breakdown. Um, well, and I think we talked about, so not just what they cost. I'd like to know what they do. Correct. And I'd like yeah. to know which ones you think are absolutely mission critical and which ones are nice to have. I mean, I think that would be a big. I will tell you three of the four that are in here, you guys approved last year. And um, we did a slideshow to show you all the. So I still have that if you want to revisit that one again. The, the uh, Civic Plus. Um, would have been a 29k addition. We had the we had the presentation on Tuesday. It, it was fantastic. It was interesting. It was it was it would have been helpful. I don't think it was twenty nine thousand dollars worth of helpful. When, after we we went through all the different variables, uh, there are some things that uh, would be time savers, efficiencies, and, and capture a lot of documentation for us. However, when you look at the cost of what it would do is to do it manually compared to what they were offering. I just didn't see the, there wasn't a bang for that buck. How about we have that discussion when we have the paperwork where we can Got follow yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So this software number has gone from 100 and 157 even to 55. Correct. Just be, what did we get rid of? What did we eliminate? Citywide, which was the asset database, it was 65,000. Um, and also this, the Civic Plus permits and module that chip was just talking about just code permits and um zoning zoning okay is there an easy way to have a since we talk about this over the course of four weeks to have a column for what changed from week one to week yeah, two yeah. week two to week three absolutely just, so i don't have to refer back to last week's copy yeah, to yes. this week's yeah. and yeah. thank and, you uh, that'd yeah. be very that helpful. good yeah citywide asset was a sixty sixty thousand dollar nut is that what you said the front yeah the front end the first the first year and that's that's to track the the GIS wastewater capacity, right? And that's sort of that was to track all our assets like roads, buildings, when they need maintenance, um, project management. Yeah. Yes, it, it. There's some benefit to it. I'm, I'm in discussions with Easton. They developed their own. Let's see if if we can get that. The it it. Uh, when you put something in the ground or you have data on it, you can do all that from when it was buried to what was put in and life expectations and all that to tell you not just uh, putting data in when you've made a change, but it will do the calculus and the algorithms to kind of figure out when you will expect to have to make a repair. Um, and they're, my understanding is they're fairly accurate, but they are. There's somebody in the town on the town staff that knows how to operate this stuff, this, this, this software? They'd be trained to do it. Okay. Would it, would it track um, the equipment in the new plant? That, I mean, will we make that part of the um, deliverables to include that information in, into that 
into the city the database? database or whatever. I'm, I'm assuming we could if we were to make that purchase. Yeah. If the grants would cover that is what you're asking? No, well, that's what that's the well, other question, right? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I don't see why it couldn't be part of it if it's part no. of the the infra the digital infrastructure of the plant. That would make sense. You know, like how long the control system's going to last? How long you know? But to Jim's point, motors, well, the, well, the grants pay for it. I think that's it's an allowable charge. Yeah. Yeah. We can find that out. Right. Yeah. And it's, it's, so is it limited to just the new purchases, or are you allowed to inventory everything else? Sorry, what, what's the uh, what's the recurring what's the annual cost of City Plus just for the it gave us a sixty Civic a Plus the annual recurring would have been twenty nine okay and citywide the annual recurring was twenty six so sixty five initial twenty six ongoing yeah okay do you know do you want to know the other software <laughs> um, I know centrally HR Crystal, you can't oh you go. gosh darn it. I don't. I don't think they're. I don't know. I'm we'll, we'll wait. We just let's wait till we oh, get, until get the list. Yeah. Let's get the please. chart and the yeah. list, please. Yes. Just sit down if you want. We'll try to wait. Just sit here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what Grab the heck? Off. Right. Yes, please. <laughs> it's a hot mic. Be careful. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what we're doing. So. I guess. So is there, <laughs> as an overall um, increase in the budget. For A92, the budget went up 363000 Most of that was based in salary, software, and benefits. So I didn't know if you guys wanted to look through some of this and if you had any questions. I didn't know if you want to go line by line. Well, so let's talk about the salaries. Is this inclusive of new employees? Yes. Let's the talk about them. Back to this page. Yeah. Yep. Back to this little packet. Okay. Let's talk about them. Yes. Yeah. Do we have a proposed admin and a proposed finance? Should be, yeah. That's the, the total cost is 178,340. That's inclusive of all fringe benefits and salary. Someone should probably justify their existence. The finance. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. a data I'll, person. I'll speak, to the, I'll, <laughs> I'll speak to the finance one. We, we had talked about that at council because of the state funds, the federal funds, the, the different funding streams we're bringing in, and just the level of effort that's going to be happening in that office that uh, we felt that that would be a prudent move to up that staff. I'm, I'm supportive of an increase in finance staff because of just the sheer volume of government dollars coming into the town from the state and the feds. I, I can't imagine dealing with water bill calls while you're also trying to adequately manage $15 million of the state's money. That's my support. We're, oh, we're not going to get that money every year. I mean, maybe for the next three years or so. I mean, what, what happens after that? Well, we're going to be spending it on a ramp. I mean, it's not just yeah. going to like come and go out. Right. We had discussed when we initially, Chip and I talked about the position, we had talked it three to five years um, initially, and then if, if things died down and grants went, you know, then we would revisit at that point. But certainly we could revisit each year if you wanted. Or we could do it as a 1099, bring them on a Actual, contractual basis. I feel until a little we, bit uncomfortable with a 1099 employee managing multi-million dollar yeah, government grants. That's true. I would like us to be able to direct their work fully. Correct. What? What about the admin? I can speak on that one. So that is a proposed position for the, a third person in the front office at Town Hall. Um, so we used to have <clears throat> two full-time, one part-time, um, and we have not had that in several years. And this person would be, um, in my head, would primarily be- Better get him out of there. <laughs> yes, I know. <clears throat> Um, is would be taking off taking away the um, all the not all but the be the primary person responsible for phone calls people coming in Norman Betty Jean minutes and building permits um, and um, 
posting payments and that it, it's it gets to be um, very overwhelming out front and then we also have when they're um, you know there's more vacation going on so then we have one person out front um, and then that backup is crystal and I um, when that when there's only one person out front so it's just, it, it, there's a lot going on out there for just two people right now so both people out front are an admin assist for correct, correct. Mm -hmm. be kind of like a receptionist but it, but taking yes yes it's correct and would also would also um train to back up mm -hmm. um norma and betty jean as long as that if when we were interviewing in the back of my mind that person would be the backup for norma and betty jean for planning commission backup if they're out park advisory board if norma's out um that sort of thing offer a cross training yeah would the fine would the would the fine so this would be a four person finance team if if we have this so is there any ability for this four person finance team to take some of the billing from the front office staff and maybe free up i mean you're doing I mean, it with um like linda does do all the billing and um now i mean you know most of what they're doing is taking phone calls from customers they have to enter payments. in payments. 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 And yeah. then they enter all the payments into the system. That they're are. usually the first. first. So they're, they're um, usually the first as well to re for when residents or citizens call asking about their water bills and trash. So they and trash and anything else. Oh, I, I get else. that. So I mean, I just. Okay. Hopefully the new phone system may help with some of that. Right. That, yeah, that, that would. Where are we on a uh, finance person on the council here? I'm supportive. Likewise. Same. Yeah, same. All right. Administrative assistant. I am not supportive at this time. Neither am I. Council person worth? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll try to get by without that. Okay. Yeah. I understand the need and we'll request that we take another look as we're finalizing the budget. All right, we'll take another look. Thank you all. Do we need to look at anything else from A92? We've got software in hand for next week. Salaries we've kind of just covered and benefits. I feel like we've. Yeah. So um, when we come back next week, I'll adjust this to show the changes made tonight and I'll have the column for you to show Perfect. what you see. So can you can you rebuild see. the one last week to this week too. Yeah. Thank you. That would be great. Yeah, because there was. I can't remember. It would, no, that's all right. Very small changes. So it shouldn't take me long to do that. All right, if you want to, are we all good with A92? Yep. At the time. moment, we could revisit at any time. Are we going to the police department general fund? So, Hobbs, if you want to come up and. Can, can I make actually one comment about the A70 adding QAC TV um, to A70? I just wanted to let you know, I, I did send an email to George Harvey um, about whether or not um, they would be able to do it. I he's in charge of QAC TV yep, yep. But this um, is to get it on the Planning Commission correct QAC TV. yes um, the Planning Commission meetings are scheduled the same night as the Board of Ed meetings so they would be recorded but they would not be aired live they would be posted after so I just wanted to if I haven't heard back from George that they have the staff to cover it but I just want to let you know that most of the time the Planning Commission work session or is the work session and the first and third the board of ed also meets those same dates um, so i just wanted to let you know that thank you police general fund come on up chief <laughs> wasn't sure you were staying 
Oh, did you want me to move? In case they have any questions about <laughs> that. Oh, I got the vest. Good. I got the vest. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. So the overall increase for the police department budget is 326,000, um, mostly within the salary and pension, and I think it includes another position which Chief could discuss with you guys. And the salary for the proposed, sure, so second, you guys yeah. have that. <clears throat> It only took us an hour and 10 minutes to catch on. To... <laughs> so there's one officer in this plan. Is that right? One proposed. One proposed. That's what I meant. Yep. In addition to what we've been allocated for. Which is 13, right? Yes. And as we are coming into the end of the fiscal year, we are just about fully staffed. We are looking at hiring the 12th by the end of may and we have a 13th that is going to the academy by july 1 so we should be at full staff by july 1. so this is not truly vacant correct okay That's fine. oh i'm sorry no, this, we have we do have one that is vacant but we're, okay. we're looking at filling it now okay. we're in the process of hiring someone what does uh Council think about this budget. I, mean, I will just say, I think you know, I would love nothing more than to have another officer. I think we're up against a hard budget reality, not not of the overall budget, but the fact that these just get more and more expensive every year. I mean, this, the decision of Leops was unavoidable, but it puts uh, these municipalities in an impossible position, right? Where it's not that. just a competitive salary now; it's this big freight on on pension and uh, you know, I just don't know if it's or it's you know it, it is a hard it's a hard sell I mean given what we have as a budget I mean I know last year we had uh, indicated that we wanted to add two additional officers and they kind of got tabled for a while it was revisited and uh, again we couldn't we couldn't get them in the, in the budget so that's why I tried to see if we could do one this year chief could you clarify if this one additional is granted does that combine with filling the 14 position vacancy allow for all of your shifts to have a sergeant? Right now, all our shifts do already have, the case. It is already the case, okay. yes. How can I see from this list or from this budget your overtime burden from FY23 versus or FY24? Yeah, the the FY23 budget was seventy thousand. The FY24 proposed budget is seventy two thousand four fifty. What what line is that on here? It's about oh, I see it. uh, seventy thirty. Yep, yep, yep. So I mean, you can make a pretty compelling case, right? That if this will durably fix your overtime problem, then it's probably not a terrible investment. Staffing has always been our our, our problem. You, you hire some, you lose some. It's been back and forth for so many years that. Over time is, is where it's catching up. So right now, as we hire more, we can see that balance actually drop, as you just stated. So, And, and that's what the hopes are. And just to also clarify as well, is, is, you, know, you can have active um, personnel, and they could be on injury leave or you know, workers' comp, um, and they can't work. So there's a position out, even though, granted, I know that it's still a budgeted position, but... As far as getting active, you know, physical officers out onto the street would allow if you have an extra officer. What is the driver of your overtime? Is it is it sickness? Is it people calling out sick? I'm just curious, like what? A little bit of everything. It's okay. it's probably events are part probably part of it. Yes. Yes. So we've had even with special events, we call in personnel that accounts for a lot of the overtime right there. Um, fireworks, Christmas parade, uh, national night out, et cetera. Anything that we put on special where we have to call somebody in because we need the extra personnel, it's overtime. Um, what we try to do is we try to drive towards more of the comp time. So instead of the, taking the pay, they take the time off. Um, that's been a, very popular among the officers right now. Um, Does that push your overtime 
just to another day, right? Potentially. Ultimately, yeah. Okay. Pushes it to June when we bring it all over. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it. So. But that is the challenge when you have somebody takes off, somebody has to cover the shift. Right. Yeah. So right now, as we get up to full staff, that's going to mitigate some of that over time as well. If somebody needs a day off or they get sick or two people on the same shift get sick, at least we'll have the coverage. Your, your, your question about the events, I've not been a huge champion of events up here. I'll own that, partly because I think they, they externalize a lot of costs, right? And you just made that case, right? It's like yeah, the fireworks don't cost us $5,000. They cost no, they us $5,000 plus whatever. Yeah, we have to pay to have exactly. staff there, cops there. Exactly. I think, I think. And Kip to help clean up after. Yeah, it's, better, it's Well, for too, sure. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 th I said all. I yeah, think I said all. The entire town staff, yeah. Yeah. Central absolutely. staff. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard of other towns that require, that they, they, some of those costs are not externalized. If you want to have an event in town, you actually have to pay the town for uh, police service and things that are clean, well, you know. And I think we probably should have an event permit of some sort. You know, I, I asked the question recently about what's the permit process for closing a street in my neighborhood, and there isn't one other than that you get permission to close the street and then you provide the insurance. It seems to me like the town could charge some sort of fee, provide that level of liability insurance, and defray some of the other things that go into it. Blocking the street, police mm -hmm. on foot, whatever... Not saying you, it might not be, you know, net zero, but could offset. I think we had discussed that at one other time. Uh, even with developments coming in, having builders, you know, help mitigate calls for police services and so forth. So that's not a bad idea at all. I mean, I, we use Prince George's County as an example a lot because Crystal and I both used to work there. But in Prince George's County, there's a public safety impact fee when you build a house. Yeah. yeah. Crittenden County has one, too. Just the, the Centerville is, the municipalities are exempted from it. For now. Right. Well, and theirs is for all public services, right? And so there's specific police and fire related in some jurisdictions that just fund your police department. Okay. Do we... Um, so I guess I'll go back to my concern is like, I think there's enough... And you tell me this is wrong, right? But I think there's, a, there's enough churn in... in irrespective of how great of an environment you have created for morale and salaries and it's a place people want to work, I think there's going to be enough churn in turnover that this is never, if we give it a 15, you know, 14th officer, I guess, it's never, it's not going to be full very long. I'm hoping that's not the case. But yeah, yeah. Um, ultimately... The, since I've set up here, I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. since I've set up here, there's always been sure. some vacancy has. in the force. Right? Yeah, I mean, you're... We're not going to keep all our staff all the time. It's yeah, just not the no, case. for sure. Um, ultimately, right now, we have a very excellent group of people, um, and they seem super excited to be here. So hopefully we can retain them for a decent amount of time. So as we're looking forward into possibly more development, more population coming into the town, you know, I would like to prepare for that because obviously when that happens, we're going to have more crime, more calls for service, and things going to increase. So the demand on the police is going to go up. So we're just in preparation, trying to prepare for those times, when and if they occur. So this, this has my support with the understanding that I know you're going to keep an eye on over time and that we can ask this follow-up question looking back at the same time next year, what was that dent? Sure, you no. Know, and and we don't see it zeroed out clearly because of these events and other factors. Right. But um, so a lot, Some of the overtime has been mitigated because I, I've been a extremely – heavy hand and, and a working chief I've, I've covered a lot of shifts as well uh, without the compensation for it just to keep the cost down so uh, you know and I'm not trying to extend that down to my officers you know obviously cost an overtime and time away from their family so that's helped mitigate it a little bit and obviously I need to be in the office I need to be doing chief work and not always out on the street handling calls so you know I think getting an extra person would help help with that endeavor what is the total cost of an extra person, though, when we think about vehicle and equipment and all of that? It's because, you know, the salary only tells us the personnel cost. What's the sure. the total cost of adding an officer? Sure. I mean, your, your standard SUV is what we're paying for it, upfitted and everything. You're looking at between sixty and 65000 as the cost of the town. And that's a new vehicle with upfitting. Yeah. So there's that. The equipment that goes on the officer itself between the uniforms, the gun belts, the guns, et cetera, you're, you're talking about in excess of 
probably close to 15,000, just to upfit that officer to get him street worthy, if we will. Do those numbers show up in here anywhere? I, oh. that I don't know. Um, I, it's close to $200,000. That would show up in the capi yeah. capital budget. Well, some of it's yeah. capital. That yeah. was, yeah, yeah. right. Right. Uh, well, the way I think of it is overtime doesn't require additional pension or health insurance, um, whereas hiring another officer does, yes. you know, that's the trade-off, you know, so I'm kind of willing to increase the salary budget, but not actually hire another, budget. another officer. That's understandable. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm equipment and all that too. Yeah, right. I'm, and all the equipment and the capital expense and everything of another officer. So that, that is wear and tear on the force though, because it's, you know, when they're covering overtime, they're they're coming in that would have been a day off now that now they're working. And so so I, th I think we have to, I think uh, Council Vice President Kaiser looked at it when she was looking at the comp time was part of that. What is what is the the nexus of all these things kind of coming together and, and what are the impacts, if, if you will? So hypothetically, and I, I truly don't know where I am on this, but hypothetically, if we did not approve another officer, would other lines in this budget go down? based on not needing equipment or uniforms or cars or? I mean, I, you know, do you purchase those things out of your contract services or are they strictly capital items that? They were capital. Yeah. yeah. So, so in no. the operating, no. I, I know, but somewhere yeah. in this budget, in other the, numbers would go down. Yeah, and the capital. We'll clarify that but for you. Your force at 14, at 14 officers needs two, two cars a year or something, I mean, right? Yeah, we're allocating Ideally. for 13 officers right now, yes, if right. we went to 14. Yeah, we the rotation, current rotation is two vehicles per year to replace old and high mileage vehicles. So my concern about me, I, I'm, unfortunately, I can't be with you on I this. I see the concern. Right? Yeah. Um, and I just think it's a big ask. It's not only a big ask, right? I don't think that, and you've, I don't think we're always going to be in these sort of flush times, right, where the town is looking at, some some good revenue streams from CDS requests that I don't think are going to be there forever. I don't think that's going to be sustainable forever, uh, and some some other federal largesse and and uh, you know generally speaking assessments are up. You know when when you when that stuff falls, then we're looking at really difficult decisions of whether you're raising taxes. I just wonder about the sustainability of this. So. I think if we start to see some of these developments happen, like if we're starting to sign on the dotted line of some of these infill parcels, let, let's revisit this, right? Oh, and, absolutely. And try to, try to have those fun. That's just, I'm just one guy up here, so I'll look to the others too. I'm with you. That's person Johnson, you're, you're supportive of I, I am supportive, but I also could see the, the rationale that, that everyone else has given for declining. Yeah, I'm sort of where you are. As we increase the population of the town, let's continue to revisit. I I asked a colleague of mine who serves on a city council of a, a city in California. They have 10 times our population and 19 officers. And, and so just try, I know, just trying to understand the, I think we probably do ultimately need more officers, but agree that this federal largesse and even the state has had to tighten its belt already with revenue projections coming in about half a billion dollars less than expected. I think we have to be careful, but I, I also have said this since the day I got on the council, I think we should be charging developers a whole hell of a lot more to build here. And and so if, if and when we get a new plant, I think everyone should benefit from that town department wise. I, I got a call from a developer again today um, and an and a, a architect asking and I, my response is that nothing's changed in the last two weeks <laughs> that the that if they want to put together a plan to present to the planning commission that my recommendation would be wait until the state has struck their budget and the council has an idea of the monies that are coming in and then be advised that the per for the council to look at the costs associated with this plant and the, and the various scenarios for the plant that they will present in the PER is going to be in early to mid-June. So that absent these data points, the council, I don't think, is going to make a decision. But I think if you want to push forward with planning and say, hey, this is what we would like to bring before, I'm sure the council would like to look at that. But if you're going to try and ask them for allocations right now, 
I don't think you're going very far. So. I, I do have a question. While we have talked around, and, and Council Vice President Kaiser just mentioned this, the, the consideration of impact fees, um, I, I would just be curious to know what the temperature is up here on agreeing this evening that we should make that a priority to put together some sort of tiger team. Um, I, I've continued to say that uh, I'd like to see some sort of formula for the police department. I'm sure there's something for public works that as, as we grow, there's an operational impact that we've kind of predetermined in a calculus. Um, so I, know I don't know what to do that tonight, but I would like to, I'm curious if we're all on board for that. <clears throat> if you don't mind my asking. I don't know where the Tiger team is, but I'm happy to participate. <laughs> um, I'll just. Uh, Sadly, I do. I think. I, think, uh, I, <laughs> I just think as we as we try and tackle affordable housing, right? Every nickel of those impact fees are passed on to the home buyer, right? And I think so. You create an environment. And we've seen this in other places. Uh, I'm acutely aware of it. Is you, where you can't build affordable housing. Right, because you need to be building these half million, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar houses. And so I just, I'm not opposed to talking about. It. I just must be mindful of, of that and there's yeah. those additional factors. We yes. can, you can also, you, know, you can tier everything for equity purposes and waive impact fees for workforce housing. And so I think there's mm -hmm. conversation to be had about there being a difference in terms of how much money the developer is going to make building townhouses that a teacher and a firefighter can afford and building seven hundred thousand dollar homes. <clears throat> for economic viability, what we should be doing is spending money to get economic development in that business park that underutilizes resources and overpays on property tax. Like whatever the business park can recruit. Oh, I thought you said sp us spending money. We should put effort towards it. How about that? <clears throat> Assisting in the recruitment of businesses. Yeah, I agree. However reform that may take, that's where you'll get a balance in your budget. The resources you need to do what you need to do. With respect to police staffing, the last time we had the major surge in the number of officers, the underlying determination was to make sure we had two officers on the road 24-7. That's right. That was really important because at that time there were solo runs and it was scary. It was bad. It was bad, really scary. Um, <clears throat> you know, the crudest math says you have to have five employees to run 24-7, 365. So um, you're right at that. Additional officers or floaters or filling in for vacancies, those sort of necessary things. But you're, you're right at probably what you, what you need to run to. 24-7. That and including the supervisor on that group as well for oversight. Right. Mm -hmm. Are we otherwise good on the police department general fund budget? I'm having a hard time understanding a specific line item. The 7130, it seems to be a roller coaster ride. The health insurance. Uh, it's a deductible reimbursement. It's basically based on enrollment from FY23 to proposed FY24. Okay. So if there were... In prior years, it had been less than half of what you've budgeted this year. <clears throat> Correct. I'm, I'm just having a hard time understanding the math. No doubt you have math to back it up. I'm just curious. Right. Uh, it depends upon if they were enrolled at the time and didn't enroll until recently or if they got married or you know so a lot of different changes can occur that would again change the tier level and we're also trying to track it a little better now um, a lot of times we lump some of it in with the health insurance mm -hmm. line and so now trying to separate it out more so that you can see it separate but also so that we can track how much we're spending each year got it and that's another one of those numbers that may mathematically change based on headcount. Yes, correct. Thank, thank you. Did Good you guys work. make a decision on an officer? Was that a remove They're at this? I'm not supportive of it okay. tonight. All right, any other questions for the police department? 
I do want to advise, and I meant to tell you all this at the beginning and totally forgot, I did update the property tax rate in this budget to the constant yield rate. So what you're seeing now is with using the constant yield rate as opposed to the 535 that we used last year. The 5207. Yes. <clears throat> so so. That, that took out $93,000. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. And some of the adjustments we had the other way. So right. that we're still in the negative, but much better than we were. So. Thank you. That's great to hear. Is the next uh, <clears throat> section Goodwill Fire Department? If you guys wanted to, I don't, if anybody had had a chance or had heard from Goodwill, had they reached out? No, and I actually am not supportive of moving this, of, of increasing this line item until we hear from them. Okay. And I left and it the same. I think same, it's sort of the bare minimum expectation is that they come in and ask for the. Yeah. yeah I would yeah. agree. <laughs> okay. I would agree. Yeah, we're doing this because we we've talked to firefighters in the parking lot, right? I mean, at least that's why I would do it. You know, Sit right up. now, yeah. Two things, real quick. If I'm I can sorry. Get them on. Um, one thing I have to answer a question that was brought up at Councilman Johnson last meeting about our contribution to the uh, Queen Anne County Drug yes. Task Force. So the MOU that's currently in place uh, basically states uh, they would like a person on the task force from our agency if we cannot provide one, just assistance anytime they do operations within the town jurisdiction. If we can provide personnel to help back their, their operation, that's all they typically request. Ultimately, if we can get to that point with staffing, to put somebody out there on a task force, then ultimately that's what they would like. Um, we did talk about maybe a monetary addition, like maybe a $5,000 uh, contribution to the task force. It's not required in the MOU. However, I don't think it would be a bad idea to look at something like that in the future. Um, we're, we're trying as we get to full staff to train one of our officers that we were looking at putting out at the task force. He's currently uh, attending uh, undercover and drug operation training coming up. So uh, if we can get to the point where we're fully staffed, we would like to put him out there to, to assist. Because it's my understanding right now after talking with the director that they are extremely short staffed. And um, as we all know, they don't know what monies they're gonna get this year as well. Well, and clearly the benefit that we have isn't just the, the, the drug related investigations. It's the, sure. the no, training of, of our workforce, our police workforce with the team. So there's definitely you know, a cross relevance and benefit to us. And we don't budget any re potential recovery funds. Well, there is a, a allegedly there's a percentage that's shared with the town in, in total contributions. That but we, we don't budget it. No. Right. It's all. Yeah. If if it happens, it happens. Right. Yes. Budget is a good good word. <laughs> yes. Let's uh, following up on that. No, not a problem. Um, the second part of my ask is. In, in lieu, possibly, of the additional person, obviously, it's been knocked down, I would like to request uh, from the council that they visit our organizational chart for the police department. Currently, we are allocated for a chief of police and one lieutenant. Uh, it has been authorized and approved in the past by council that we had two lieutenants, uh, which was phenomenal at that time. It, it assisted the department with running very efficiently at that time. It was, I think, about maybe four or five years ago, uh, they switched it back to one lieutenant by one of the former chiefs. Um, reasoning being, as it was indicated to me, was uh, there were two people that were eligible for that second lieutenant spot, and he didn't want them to argue over it or cause any animosity, so they just struck it down. That's a good reason. <laughs> yeah. I can't. That's, Sometimes we're such a small town, I just can't. Okay. Yeah. As it was indicated to me, that was the reason. So my ask of the council would be if, if we could look at the reorganization and add that second lieutenant back into the chart. Uh, we do have somebody that is eligible for that spot, and as so, there would be somebody to fill his spot as well. So we have one person that's eligible for a sergeant, and one sergeant that's eligible for lieutenant if approved. And let's just see the budget implications of that. But I think we have the they numbers. Are, it's already it's in like there. calculated. So like Seven thousand dollars would be the, the next. Yeah, I think it was sixty-seven twenty-seven was a total to finish out fiscal year twenty twenty-three. So your salary table crystals reflective of that, or? Yes. Yes. If, if approved, yes. Just to show, you know, worst case scenario numbers. I just I right there. Thank you. Yes. If I might pay. <laughs> the tiered <laughs> and some, the symmetry that comes from that, from a command standpoint, I, has my support. Obviously, I would like to see. I had to do that. So, the, so it's reflected in this somehow? 
It is the if it if the promotion uh, was approved, those cost estimates are in there. Oh, okay. that column prorated cost for promo salary yes. adjustment. Sorry, correct. Yes. So it's in the total at the end. Yes. So it's five thousand seventy-one dollars. That's the whole implicate. The whole salary implication is five grand. Prorated cost. Yep. Uh, for sure. I, yeah. It's inclusive of the operating um, line as well in B10 until you, right. You should be able to manage your org chart however you see fit, I think. So I'm here, here. Appreciate that. Thank you. So it includes new <coughs> people on the bottom of it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're good with Goodwill. Gonna, somebody's going to ask them to come in. Uh, maybe I'll take care of that. I'll take care of that. <laughs> I know a guy. I could drive by there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a guy, but I could. I'm sure oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do. <laughs> we all know the same guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Streets General Fund. <laughs> all right, Kip, you're up. Hold on, I'm going to I will just. I'm just going to stay here. Is that okay? An yeah. overview. Okay. Um, overall, the budget increased 271000 um, two of the big things you'll notice the salary increase that's because the two that were working in the water and wastewater are now under the streets and the Which HUR the money um, that the state proposed to give us is 60,000 higher um, for 24 as opposed to FY 23 for, for where what was that last one? Oh, I'm sorry <laughs> it's C11 7440 okay. STRE You'll see an increase yep. of 61,000 there. And, and what we, we get a letter from the state that tells us the expected HUR. So right now the expected um, HUR for 24 is 285,000. Could that change? Absolutely. They change it a couple times a year. So I'll update as I get new letters, but right now this is where um, we stand with that. So okay, just, so the, the 271 is not all Centerville taxpayer revenue, is what you're right. saying. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, Kip, if I stole your thunder. I'm good. <laughs> there are no new positions um, in this um, operating budget that you have in front of you. Salaries is strictly just the transfer of the water wastewater operators over to C11. So walk me through how what what's happening there. What, no, what happened was because we couldn't hire staff to uh, on the street side on the water and wastewater side okay uh, as you recall in september we turned operations over to maryland environmental service when that happened the last two of what should be a total of five people for the water and wastewater transferred over the streets and roads um, they highly qualified for that position uh, because our staff is always in, intermingled. You know, the the guys on the water and wastewater have always worked well with the streets department. Uh, everything, whether it's picking up trash, whether it's repairing leaks, street repairs, that kind of stuff. So uh, it was because of that we're staffed the way we are right now we are vacant we do have one vacancy um yes right now so if it wasn't for that we'd have three vacancies so <clears throat> in a weird way that does affect the um the cost transfer rate too correct the allocation of costs mm -hmm. allocation yeah. of uh, 25 percent of that i don't know how it reflects it when you change the allocation of cost year to year to balance the budget it impacts the foundation from which you're applying the 25 percent and it changes the need for it on the other side that's what you want to call it so essentially the the 25 percent right now we have 25 percent in the budget right um 
for allocation of cost transfer from general to enterprise. And those positions are inclusive. And I can tell you that since those two have transferred to the streets, 90% of their workload is still water and sewer related. They're still the same people that read the water meters. They're still the same people that repair the pivots at the spray field. They're still the same people that do the repairs that need to be done both water and wastewater plants, pump stations as well. One of the heavy cost last time MES run the plant was everything got contracted out because we still have that skill set here we can utilize them to make the repairs to the pivots and things of that nature so when do we plan and or hope to take over our own plant again when there's a new one or I mean I think our our we would love to take it over with the new one I think if you're hiring towards a state-of-the-art plant that's we would stand a better chance, but I think that would be the earliest we could really look to take over our own plant. Because I know this isn't how you want the situation to look, so it just... Iron MES was like being punched in the gut to me. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with the, the workforce that's available, the skilled operators are not there, and that's where the whole problem is. Uh, it was quite a hit to us when our lead operator that had been with us for 15, yeah. 13 to 15 years left and went to the town of Easton because it could make significant more money there. And besides that, he's only on call once every five weeks. He also gets a take home truck the whole week that he's on call. So there's a whole list of those kind of opportunities out there that skilled operators are not going to come here to work for. Um, the uh, skilled operators in the state are dwindling very fast. Uh, five years ago, there was a thing put out by MDE, and they figured that within that next five years, 60% of the certified skilled operators were going to retire and it's going that way and there's no younger ones coming back in to fill those positions uh, it's a rather daunting task for an individual to do all the studying it takes and to pass these certifications it's no simple task so has so there is no wastewater one of these anymore essentially yes absolutely absolutely is because we still well, but it's going to mes yes now. right well for M now mes is included in it you we still have all the repairs and maintenance to take care of and there, but but, but those people are now reflected in the streets department i'm just those two people are reflected okay. in the I street okay. right that's the only part that that's changed i got you the exception of the health insurance that's still paid or taken out of the C2124. And we do have one employee that's taken out of the water and wastewater, and that's our program manager, because that's where her work hits. And then it gets reimbursed from ARPA. Okay. Thank you. Yes. C21. No, it's page 20. Yeah. Sorry, that wasn't indicated on my spreadsheet. <laughs> C20. I'm constantly um, impressed with how lean of an operation you run. I I'll put it this way. We can't I know. do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. Well, a couple of remarks I was going to make. Um, that <clears throat> when we saved the, um, when we decided to take the funds to pay off the debt out of the um, fund balance instead of operations, I was hoping we could dedicate some of that extra funds to repairs and maintenance for you. So remind me of that when we get around to finalizing. I'll remind everybody right now, it was always <laughs> my thought that whatever I saved in the budget would come back as capital improvement the following year. Why did I save it if it just got stuffed away? 
don't get me wrong, I'm thankful it's there and we're reaping the rewards. But um, if it wasn't for the capital expenditures we did here in these past couple of years, we had trucks you could see the, through the floorboard and watch the road go by your feet. You know, that's entirely uncalled for. We've taken care of that, right? I mean, we've... A lot of it. There's still a long list of stuff there. There's no more trucks that you need. There's no yeah, more. Oh, definitely. There's, there's a, uh, our vacuum truck. That should have been replaced five years ago. You know, and that's a big now, when you say When you say your, your savings, you know, you're under budget every year that's in the black should be rolled in to your next year's capital budget, I, I'm in complete agreement with you. So, you know, I think this council's got a decision to make. I think I've already made it intellectually, whereas you're looking at a funds balance. I'm not sure the funds balance is too big. I think it's being under operationalized, right? You're sort of, you shouldn't have people, you know, you, you, you look, you know, you, I know you're only 30, and so clearly this is taking <laughs> a, a toll on you. So it shouldn't be, <laughs> shouldn't be. And this is a wig. Yeah. <laughs> People shouldn't be losing sleep yeah. with six million dollars in the bank, right? And I think that's kind of if anybody's going to take anything home from this. And so I agree completely. Let's start to operationalize some of that stuff, particularly on the streets projects that we need to produce to make it happen. I mean, those are the kind of repairs that only get more costly. And it's not like there's not other streets that are coming. You know, at some point, Elm Street. Uh, you know, I don't know. work for. And yeah, Northbrook, who knows, right? A prime example of that. If yeah. nothing else, they're going to need to be repaved at some point. So. You bet. Are there vehicles where we can see the ground below our feet that we see right now. in the fleet? The vacuum truck, is there anything else? That's the worst one on the list. I will tell you that there's two other ones. There's a 1989 truck we're still using. What kind of truck is that? It's a utility truck. It's a one-ton uh, with a utility body on the back of it. Is that There's, the old fire truck that you bought a couple of years ago used? Yeah, it, and we bought that because it was a very low mileage truck. It was an old fire truck. But when what we found out, that truck was in great shape for its age. But when you start using it every day because yeah. of its age, you know, it's still a good truck, and don't get me wrong, because I would probably replace one of the others before I actually replace that. But we also have a 2011 utility truck, and it's rusted out in the quarter panels or in the corners of the cab. So, so, so I'm glad that we made the improvements to Town Hall that we did to paint and get that nasty carpet out of there and those things. But the work environment that we have other employees in is largely a vehicle we have a handful of employees sitting in town hall and it's very public facing to me it's unconscionable that we have employees in rusted out vehicles i, I just can't i can't no, while well, we have let six me, million dollars to make let me say my side of that the whole town is like that it wasn't just that we needed trucks the town hall needed that makeover the wharf needed some work done and by just putting it off year after year all of it falls in the same bag so it's not just no i we're know. saying the same thing i'm not saying we should have replaced a truck instead of doing town hall i'm saying that for me the decision to repair town hall was because i want our employees to have a pleasant exactly. work yes. environment and i Thank feel that you. way about a streets employee a town clerk and anybody well and safe i think it's yeah pleasant is nice safe is essential yeah <laughs> we've had we've had many conversations about the vehicles both both fleets you know how do we how do we modernize that but also how do we modernize it in a in a structured way that it's not all at once where everything needs to be replaced again all at once how we how do we phase it over time and and what are our worst ones what are our biggest needs what how do we approach that so is there anything in this general fund budget though that you feel like is i mean we're talking more enterprise capital budget right what we were talking about was capital we're, yeah. we're just basically right now talking focusing on the streets department here right. um you know 
Does this, anybody have any questions about this budget, about the general fund streets no. budget? <laughs> All right, page 15 would be C22, which is the waste removal. <clears throat> um, and the only change from last week was um, we had discussed we have one more year of the trash contract, so the 200K we had put in the revenue and the expense to cover a possible increase in cost has now been removed as we still have one year left with the current contract we're on. Is the um, contract with with uh, Lester not not on here? Is that someplace? Uh, it's included in the contract services. Oh, it is okay. So contract services is the whole thing. It's it's both the, okay. the uh, contract with Chesapeake to pick up the solid municipal waste and the recycle, and also for Lester to pick up the. Do you have a, I'm sorry. Do you have Do you have a sense of what Downs is costing? What part of this three sixty seven is? Um, sorry, off the top of my head, I know it's Chesapeake is like twenty five thousand a month. Lester's maybe fifteen. That's what I was thinking. That's what fifteen I had to in my head. yeah. I just looked at that contract the other day, and that's what I was have. I yeah. was thinking. And did did. So we're now taking, we're still taking all the leaf litter out to the. We're taking care of that so ourselves. So our, have and our costs come down because of that? Yes, you can actually see the difference in the landfill tipping fees. Actual as of uh, yesterday's date. Oh, wow. 2023. Okay. That's uh, 4,011. Don't get me wrong, we still have. Uh, Twice a year, we have to call a contractor in to grind it up, but we grind it and use it as mulch. Uh, but even at that, it still appears to be a savings. So, is it? Do you guys have to go down there and cut bags open? Just talk a little bit about like. No, uh, Lester Downs staff takes care of that, but our staff does have to go down and push it up in a pile and maintain the pile and stuff things like that uh when it's uh chipped into uh mulch we have to do something with that stored somewhere or it gets used around the farm at different things too i wonder if anybody watched fraggle rock as children did. There was that, 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 that <laughs> giant leaf, that yes. giant leaf pile, monster thing. Mm. That's the what, best that's, thing in the world. Yeah, <laughs> that's what this reminds me of. Yeah. Dan and I are left out of that discussion. Yeah. 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 What did you say, Frau Rock? I said Dan and I are left yeah. out of that discussion. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure you had good kids shows too. You know? <laughs> Once you got the, as good. once you got the oil lamps lit, I'm sure. You <laughs> all, right. all right, so Parks and Rec. Ford oil. <laughs> all right, are we all good with the waste removal? I think so. Okay. Parks and playgrounds. Page 16, Parks Department. An overall increase of $9,700. Is it we we um we earmarked one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars in the FY twenty three budget for trails, trails construction one hundred twenty eight thousand five hundred uh, yes oh sorry uh, no no I just uh, wanted you to have the right number that should be getting staked out in the next okay yeah, it's still it's, encumbered yeah, it's it's in the works it's getting uh, uh we got the contract to have the engineer stake it out and okay. Mike's going to be working or well he is working on the RFP to have a contractor blaze the trail after that it just so we had talked about some bridges there that might be just felled logs is that what we're going to do, do you, or we have some options it's too early to tell okay. that we have to get the trail blazed there's uh, Mike's looked at a lot of options that's exactly that for is exactly one of them uh, he's looked through a lot of um the state and department of natural resources what they use on backwoods trails like okay that. oh, that's exciting thank you yep. 
We good here? I do have just one comment, and that is um, just as a side note. The uh, festivities and beautification team had a meeting about the Centerville and Bloom project and made some really good suggestions that Mike was able to hear directly as the Parks Board Chairman. And uh, I, I just, I, I envision them coming forward <coughs> to the board to say we could do more. Not that there's an opportunity to put a number on that but this evening, but I just, just for situational awareness. I think this, this group's going to do some crowdsourcing funding independent of the town. Um, but in a perfect world, it looks like the, the Parks Board wants to kind of work together with the, the private team. So just FYI. Are you suggesting a placeholder in this budget for them? I, to be honest, it, it would be great if, if somewhere between like 5 and 10, based on just some numbers I'm hearing thrown around for some uh, low-hanging fruit projects. Um, Talking about the Park Advisory Board? Correct. We do have a budget line for them, and it, it rolls each fiscal year, so they have about 12000 right now, and then 6500 in the budget for this year. Yeah. Sixty-four thirty. dollars They, have, they oh, do have some it. projects that they're working on doing as well, so don't expect that to be there and, and by I, the end of July. I have participated in a festivities and beautification meeting. I think it's awesome. There's a lot of involved residents. I want us to be careful that we don't bring in a group of people to try to usurp the authority of the Parks Board to spend their money how they, as the appointed by this council, Parks Board chooses to spend it. No, so that's far from what I'm suggesting. Um, I, in fact, the contrary. Mike was very receptive to the ideas and wanting to work together. So, okay. But to um, your point, uh, Kip, uh, they definitely have budgeted what they want to do. So if the Parks Board decides, okay, we're going to have this group come in, which is the plan next week, to talk formally about some of the ideas that they have, right now from what I'm hearing, their hands would be tied to say, yeah, we really want to take that on. So the Parks Board's preference is if you guys have suggestions, let's do it within the confines of the contract that the Parks Board has in place for landscaping. So it's the handshake that's in place right now is actually really good and and I didn't necessarily expect it to be negative but um, Mike seemed very positive about that that opportunity so I wish he was here to speak directly to it but um, so definitely not looking to, to do what you were alluding to uh, no I'm just saying outside of hearing from the parks board that they're interested in an increase in their line I feel similarly to this about it how we do about the fire department i mean yeah and that's why to jim's point if it was excuse me I'm trying to get our, our last names <laughs> uh councilman G, uh, beecham's uh, point if if we maybe have a placeholder and then i i would ask uh, especially if it's their meeting is early next week um he would probably be in a better position of course to come in and advocate for that directly so I talked to Norma this week because she had asked and she said they were having a meeting. So she'd asked what their balance is now. And they have a little over 12000 plus 6500 in the budget for FY24 as of right now. It's a good war chest. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Anything else on parks? Uh, do, does this um, D Ted include the uh, operating expenses for the slips and whatever at the wharf area, or is that somewhere else? Marina revenue is. Are you talking about the revenue side? Well, this. The, well, the expenses. I mean. There really aren't any expenses there's no electric, for the wharf. There's no electricity. Slips. There is electric, but it was just installed last year, okay, so, so it hasn't not, been used yet. But that, uh, that would have to be will, budgeted, though, right? That, I'm sorry. It, yeah, it would have to be budgeted to, if and it's going to get used. Your so. electric supply and um, a, so that's it. That's what they need. There's a twenty-two hundred dollar increase in wharf electricity. Okay, supply. so that's uh, that's what WAR means. The slips. Yeah. It WAR doesn't mean the wharf building. It means, means the slips. Wharf park. Okay, it means so the park. All right. It's just all right. Easier for us to distinguish what's a wharf park and what's the rest of the parks okay gotcha. because of the size and the all right expense. yeah i don't know all the codes so no that's all right fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right no one would care. <laughs> main street general fund any comments questions concerns these are just really strange amounts I, that it so <laughs> so i meant out karen um had originally gone through and just added a three and a half percent like across the board to the budgets um mm -hmm. we had talked about just mm -hmm. taking this back down to the forty thousand um 
I just it, it, for will. next week's meeting it'll be down to forty thousand, not the forty one four oh two. With this those is weird... just based on like a calculation and not yes. because things have changed in these right. Okay. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're anticipating eighty eight dollars going up for now. <laughs> <laughs> Complex, yeah. but I would not yeah. be surprised if she had it down to that level of detail. So. No, and she yeah. would. Well, yeah, she would, but no, it, it, it'll be it'll go back down just to the yeah. flat forty. So I'll put so. Uh, for the next meeting. I'll have that at forty. And so we charge the farmers market eleven hundred dollars. No, where is that at? Did that, I see that in the revenues line. Get revenue like market. Um, I'm. I will have to check about that. I want to say that um, she will do. The last few years, she's done um, some kind of promotion. She'll work with businesses to do a promotion for the farmers market. She'll get donations from. So she did a bag one year, and you put your logo on there. So I believe the revenue part it, that they give away at the farmers market. So there's a plan, right? So so I would think that revenue would be here as farmers market and go right back out, as in addition to the forty. I guess I'm perplexed. Like, let's say she takes donations and raises eleven hundred dollars. She's got to then buy the bag. Right, and that'll be at the top part. You probably. Right, but I'm saying if the top part's staying at a flat forty from last year, and this isn't a thing that existed last year. I see this eleven hundred dollars coming in, and I don't see it going out. I would be disinclined for us to take money from businesses and do nothing with be four, it. So she said it should be forty one hundred if we're going to put another eleven hundred dollars right, in the revenue stream. Forty one thousand one hundred dollars. If the point is for her to raise eleven hundred dollars to support the farmers market, yeah, that should and be I'm back out. Not positive well, if that's the eleven hundred, but more than likely it is in within her contract services that she has up there it's is it is included in we'll, that contract we'll services out. but yeah, we'll I'm, find out i'm just incredibly supportive of the farmers market i love the idea of centerville main street doing as much as she does with the farmers market i love the idea of some sort of sponsorship opportunity you know last year they wanted a survey they couldn't find funding for it and so my husband actually sponsored it all season. Would love for that to be formalized in some way by the farmer's market. But if people are donating to a fundraising effort for the farmer's market, to me that should be over and above what we had already budgeted for Main Street and really be a come in, go out. Because mm -hmm. if I'm a private business and I'm sponsoring the farmer's market, I want my dollars to go to the farmer's market. Okay. Cemetery General Fund. Just a small increase of $3,000, basically in the contract services. Kip, my assumption is rising costs. Rising costs. It's the driver. Mm, yes. I'm not going to make that joke. All right. Where, where are we on <laughs> the information gathering? Starting. I haven't heard anything back from Deb this week, so yeah, we're still working it. I mean, the last you and I talked, she was looking for some other information. At this point, I'd be satisfied to know what are the other municipalities that own one. That, so that that was the trick. The state doesn't know because they don't oversee them. Okay, so then maybe yeah. she's not the person to answer that question for us. And who yeah. else have we asked? I've just worked with her. I've talked to some. So for a year, you've worked only with the person that you were put in touch with like I, a month ago. I, yes. Okay, got it. Watershed General Fund. I don't know. <clears throat> um, decrease in the budget for twelve hundred dollars um, based on contract services. What is the watershed? Watershed. Watershed is everything. Uh, if you look at all the. You think folks may not even be aware of all the uh, stormwater projects that the town has done over the years. Uh, when Eva Kirshner worked for the town and all of this stuff came up with uh, rain gardens and all that stuff, there was big grant money out there. Eva was in the forefront of the state, put Centerville on the map for getting so many of these kind of projects. This watershed looks over that also, and at this point, 
uh, Mike works for us and he goes to the uh, implementers meetings and the uh, uh, Corsica River Conservancy meetings and stuff you know it's kind of like a watchdog effort for our stormwater and and that kind of stuff uh, with that being said the you'll see the street sweepers included in this the maintenance of it and everything because we can charge that again this this uh, not only that but we get credits also for the number of tons of waste that we get rid of from street sweeping as well so yeah thank you thank you we're at 735 we're at the enterprise fund do we want to keep going or do we want to let's say some funds for next week <clears throat> honor fund <laughs> well, i'm gonna miss the fun so. so next week what i'll do is i'll bring you two packets i'll bring you one to show the changes from last week to this week and then one to show the changes from this week to next week I'm gonna be and the it in. list i will i promise council <laughs> vice president kaiser i will get that next week appreciate that i'm going to be joining on zoom i think next week can i ask so. a favor of council um and my apologies if we and i'm speaking for all of us if we miss something that you asked for at a meeting um all of us all of your staff has looked at these numbers so hard for the past number of weeks things all kind of run together and um if you have an ask for us i would ask that you put it in the email and send it through the town manager to us because it's very easy this late at night for us to miss a note or miswrite it or anything uh, we're all here to serve you at our best efforts thank you for that we'll do that mm -hmm. Can I get all these sent electronically for next week? Because I'm not going to be here, so I can. Yeah, I'll absolutely. need them electronically too. Yep. Right. And if you want a printed copy, I can bring them to you. Oh, no, I can no, have no, them I don't want any paper. Oh, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. here. You're <laughs> welcome to come to Williamsburg. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, I will make sure you get them electronically. <laughs> but Steve is. I'm sorry. Zooming in. Blonde sure. today. Sure. Happy birthday. Uh, Today's her uh, birthday. Happy there birthday. Is a birthday. birthday. <laughs> well, what you. better way to celebrate? <laughs> 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 yes. yeah, she sets the schedule, so that's a choice. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. What were you thinking? It was good luck. <laughs> You're supposed to say that before. <laughs> yeah, I know. before. <laughs> I know. Citizens Forum? Of course. <laughs> Motion to adjourn? Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.